حور العين تناديني فدعيني أمه دعيني لتبكي دموعك يا أمي عن دربي لا لن تثنيني أمه طريقي قد وضحا والقلب يسير به فرحا إن الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا يكره في الدين صدق الله العظيم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد Dear respected brothers, elders, All praises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the benevolent, the merciful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descend infinite mercies upon the greatest of the creation, Janabi Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's a great blessing. It's a ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be a Muslim. Being a Muslim is our identity. If someone asks me or asks you, who are you? You say, I'm a Muslim. And it's a great blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has endowed us with Iman, with faith. And it's a great blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us in the nation, in the ummah of Janabi Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Today, the topic of my conversation is Islam and multicultural society. It is very important to know how to live in multicultural society because most of the people think that Islam does not speak regarding multicultural society. We live in this country and actually we live in multicultural society. In Britain, people are misunderstanding the term of multicultural society. So it is very important that as a Muslim we should know what are the responsibility of a Muslim living in multicultural society? Multicultural society, the term of multicultural society refers to a society in which people from different background, different color, different languages, 
live. And this is not happening the first time in Britain that Muslims are living in multicultural society. In fact, this has been happening since the arrival of the Prophet There are guidelines in the character of the Prophet how he dealt with Jews, how he dealt with Christians, how he dealt with non-Muslims. And in the light of his model, we can gain lessons and we can learn how to live in multicultural society. What are the responsibilities of a Muslim living in multicultural society? If a Muslim is living in multicultural society and living under a non-Islamic state, as a Muslim, it's your responsibility, it's your solvency that you should abide by the rules and regulations conducted by the government. For instance, when we had the nationality of this country, <coughs> we promised that we will abide by the rules and regulations of this country. We will not do anything which will cause violence, terrorism, or any rot, any fighting. Now, if anyone in the name of Islam turns around and raises his voice in this country and says, I'm going to kill such people because they're non Muslim, this action is non Islamic. And Islam condemns such, such action. When this government is providing you whatever you want, you have your religious independence, you can go and perform five times salah. There's no obstacle. There's no impediment. There's no problem for you. You are building masajid here and there. <coughs> Our youth is living with independence. We are not allowed to create any kind of violence in the name of Sharia. Because Islam is a name of peace, tranquility. Islam teaches us if you are living in multicultural society, you need to have beautiful model you need to have good character so the non-muslims when they see you and they should realize that he is a proper muslim the first responsibility of a muslim living in multicultural society is he should abide by the rules and regulations of government. If they do not stand against the Sharia, you should follow. It is essential. Do not transgress the limitations of law by saying, I'm a Muslim, I don't have to follow a non Islamic state. <laughs> if you don't want to stay in this country, leave this country. But don't give a bad name to Islam. You're living in this country. You're gaining the facility of this country. You're gaining the facility from the government. 
And then you're standing in front of these people, non-Muslims, and say, we are going to fight with you? Go in your own country and fight from there. But do not create problem for the rest of the Muslims in this country. Our, that's the main objective of a Muslim living in a multicultural society. Hazrat Huzaifa radiallahu ta'ala anhu I'm going to give you evidence why you said Hazrat Huzaifa radiallahu ta'ala anhu he wanted to go to Medina when he was traveling he was stopped by kuffar by the enemies they said you cannot go to Medina. He said, I promise. I promise. If you let me go to Medina, I will not participate in any battle. Remember this, I promise you. I will not participate in any battle against you. That was the promise with the kuffar. They said, okay, you can go. On approaching Medina, Hazrat Huzaifa radiallahu ta'ala an, anhu informed Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam of instance. After some time, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam announced that every Muslim should participate in the battle of Badr. Everyone wanted to participate and they, per they were preparing themselves and Hadrat Huzaifa radiallahu ta'ala anhu he prepared himself to participate in the battle of Badr when he met Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he remembered that he made a promise <laughs> the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said O oh, Huzaifa you made a promise with the non-Muslims and you're not allowed to participate in the battle of Badr, in the battle of Badr. So living in this country, living under non-Islamic state, is your responsibility. When you make a promise, you need to abide by the rules and regulations. Allahu Akbar. The second responsibility of a Muslim living in multicultural society is that you should be tolerant towards one of the religions. You need to talk with them. How many of us are ready to talk on Islam with the non-Muslims? Unfortunately, we don't have enough knowledge of ourselves. Allahu Akbar, we're not ready to talk to a non-Muslim. I met a non-Muslim, uh, he, he was a converted Muslim. And I said, what made you come towards Islam? Why did you embrace Islam? And he said, I read the story of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he went on Miraj. And I went to various Muslims. I went to them, I said, please can you explain this? And everybody was shunning and refraining from talking on such topic. Everybody was escaping. But then he said, I went to a group of scholars and they told me regarding that story. And I embraced Islam. We are ready to talk because we don't have sufficient knowledge of Islam. We are Muslim by name. By moral, I'm not judging anyone, but unfortunately, we're very far. Very, very far. Allahu Akbar. We need to talk with non-Muslims. To an alim, he was delivering a speech, and during his khutbah, he asked people, he said, what are the fara'id of ghusl? Everybody, every, everybody remained quiet and silent. One person stood and he goes, Molana, I'm going to tell you. 
the faraiz of ghusl and morana felt in his heart at least someone knows and he said go ahead and the person said towel soap water these are the faraiz of ghusl unfortunately we're not ready to gain islamic knowledge and there's a wrong phenomena in my society i have to highlight this as well that when the child is 11 years old 12 years old and the father says only read quran thrice three times then you have gained the permit of entering jannah you are scholar now you don't have to do anything does he know the messiahs of haram halal does he know the messiahs of namaz does he know the messiah of zakah no he doesn't have any kind of knowledge and this is the embarrassment of ummah today so living in multicultural society is our responsibility to talk with non muslims don't run away from them talk with them gain knowledge show them your moral and second responsibility show towards them tolerance if they are worshiping their gods let them do if they not saying anything to you you worship your religion lakum deenukum waliya deen let them worship let them practice what they want you practice your religion their religion is for them and your religion is for you do not create a problem for them you can do the belief of islam nobody stops you but do not fight upon the religions that you do this you do this and you create problem in this country it, it is very essential to understand this in the era of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam a group of christians they came in the court of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to debate on the issue of hazrat isa alaihi salatu wassalam the group of christians from najran and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam performed asr salah and they approached the masjid of prophet after asr they entered and they worshiped towards east some of the sahaba start pointing and saying what they doing they wanted to stop the christians from praying in masjid an nabawi sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam strictly stopped them and said let them pray today if a non muslim walks in masjid and we say to him oh this is masjid leave masjid one of my cousin was telling that a non muslim entered masjid accidentally so what happened everyone someone was reading quran and someone was doing zikr and he said brother you have to go out this is mosque subhanallah a non muslim comes in masjid you need to welcome a non muslim we had some non muslims coming in madrasa over here and they said we want to repent from allah from god we want to repent he said you welcome and we sat with them you need to show moral how the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam dealt with non muslims today we not showing moral to a muslim how we going to show a moral to a non muslim we got so much opportunity we got neighbors non muslim neighbors we don't have any time to go to our neighbors and ask them are you okay in fact we are afflicting them with our presence they're not happy with us by our morals Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has narrated Jibril alayhi salatu wassalam bought 
too much infinite abundant rules and regulations regarding neighbors that I began to think that Allah will make my neighbors my hair that Allah will give him share in my legacy so please show moral وَلَا تَسْتَوِ الْحَسَنَةُ وَلَا السَّيِّئَةِ إِذَا فَعْبِ الَّذِي هِيَ أَحْسَنُ The Quran says, if someone is doing bad with you, if a non-Muslim or Muslim, anyone, as a human, if he is doing bad with you, then go do good with them. وَلَا تَسْتَوِ الْحَسَنَةُ وَلَا السَّيِّئَةِ Good and evil is not equal. Repel evil with good. It's better for you. One day, فَإِذَا الَّذِي بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَهُ عَدَاوَةٌ كَأَنَّهُ وَلِيٌّ حَمِيمٌ One day, those people will have love and affection in their heart for you. So I'm, I'm just going to reiterate, I'm going to finish. Living in multicultural society, the first point, our responsibility is that we, we have to abide by the rules and regulations of Sharia. And plus, living under non-Islamic state, it is our responsibility to follow the rules and regulations conducted by non-Islamic state. The second thing, we need to, we need to fill the vacuum which we have created between ourselves and non-Muslims. We need to talk with them. We need to sit with them. We need to introduce Islam in a good manner and do not run away from non-Muslim. Preach Islam in a good way. If you can't preach, show moral. One day, inshallah, <coughs> they will realize that he is practicing Islam. May Allah give us tawfiq. Wa akhiru da'wana, alhamdulillah, rabbil alamin. حور العين تناديني فدعيني أما هدعيني لتبكي دموعك يا أمي عن درمي لا لن تثنيني أما طريقي قد وضحى والقلب يسير به فرحا